Hello and welcome to Treasury Notes, a show dedicated to the latest news and information from the Office of West Virginia State Treasurer John Perdue. I'm your host, Gina Joins. As the banker of state government, Treasurer Purdue's largest responsibility is overseeing the state's finances. But the Treasurer is equally dedicated to the other duties of his administration. As State Treasurer, John Purdue oversees the Board of Treasury Investments, the West Virginia Retirement Plus Program, the Smart 529 Program, the state's Unclaimed Property Division, and an award-winning financial education program called Net Worth. Treasurer Purdue is here today to join us. Also joining us is Josh Stowers, our newest Deputy Treasurer. Thank you both for being here today. Great to be here. Good to be here. And Josh, you will take over as Assistant Treasurer in January, and we're very happy to have you here. Welcome aboard. Thank you. It's good to be here. I appreciate the opportunity the Treasurer's uh, afforded me in bringing me on the team, and uh, always respected him and his leadership in the Treasurer's office, and uh, it's just good to be here. And Treasurer Purdue, you're always thinking ahead. We have a retirement coming up. Danny Ellis is going to be retiring as Assistant State Treasurer. And so you've decided to bring Josh on board, and he will be taking over Danny's position in January. Well, yes, and, uh, you know, Danny's been a great assistant, and we're going to miss him greatly. He's been a great uh, for the Treasurer's office. But, you know, it comes time to pass the torch sometimes, and uh, Danny's given me plenty of notice that he's planning to retire at the end of the year. And, and a great opportunity with Josh here to come aboard in the treasurer's office because of his leadership skills that he brings and administrative skills uh, uh, he brings to the office, especially in education. That was a cornerstone of my office that I believe in very much in the Smart 529 and the NetWorth program, the uh, financial literacy that we do in, in the uh, the treasurer's office and Josh has been a leader in education not only in teaching but also in the House of Delegates and serving on the education committee there in the house and his financial experience that he brings to the uh, treasurer's office uh, you know we are the bank of state government so his financial experience that he brings in serving in on the budget and in the finance committee and and so forth like that uh, he brings so much to the table and a good young leadership skills that we're excited about new things that are going to happen in the treasurer's office absolutely thanks treasurer well in recent months you know you've had the opportunity to travel around the state and see how the programs that your office administers have really had a positive impact in local communities. Talk a little bit about what it means to you to see these programs in action. Many of them you started from the ground up and now they're being administered out there in the communities. You have field staff that goes out and helps with these programs and they've really had a positive impact. Well, absolutely. You know, that's an exciting time about being in the treasurer's office, being able to travel this beautiful state of ours and be able to go on into the school system with our network program, get a life program, uh, hands-on experience for kids to learn about financial education, which I think is very important and critical in the future of our children's lives in the state as they move forward and go through uh, education. Uh, the unclaimed property, being able to give that money out as we go out and give checks out, you know, giving $120 million out to the citizens of the state of West Virginia, small businesses, churches, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, 4-H clubs, uh, you know, whatever might happen, uh, that's exciting too. But the most important thing is uh, reaching out to our seniors that we give most of that money to uh, that end up losing money as they and later in, in their years of life and being able to return that money to loved ones is uh, very important in unclaimed property. And so, and our Smart 529 plan, our college savings program, nobody ever believed we'd have a $2 billion program approaching on that number. I'm really excited about that and reaching out and, and helping grandparents and parents save for their children's education. We're doing a lot in the treasurer's office and I hope the citizens of our state realize what we've done as we continue to move forward and improve things in the banking as well as in education and reach out to our citizens and help them and it's an exciting time in the treasurer's office. We are doing a lot. In fact, in April the treasurer's office was involved in several financial education events associated, associated with Money Smart Week West Virginia. The treasurer will talk more about those in just a minute, but first we're going to go to Kim Ward for an overview of that event. While we're here meeting today, they're on planning, trying to figure out how they can get what you got. That's why AARP West Virginia started Operation Scam Jam, 
a one-day conference designed to help people understand and recognize possible scams. Bringing folks together where they can learn more about any of the scams or frauds that are out there because we believe the best consumer is a well-informed consumer. One particular scam the experts warn people about stems from the recent health care reform. They might call you and say, be among the first to get your new health insurance card. And oh, by the way, I need to confirm your name, your address so we can mail it to you. And what's your phone number and your social security number? And oh, by the way, how about a bank routing number or a credit card? AARP Director Gaylene Miller says that elderly are often targets for scams, primarily because people know they might have a little nest egg, but also because there may not be anyone there to interfere with their scam. Those people may be lonely um, and not have a lot of interaction. They may be isolated even, so uh, that makes them a prime target. Many of the people at Operation Scam Jam have learned to identify common scams. I get a lot of uh, information and correspondence through the mail asking me to send five dollars and they will tell me if I have won twenty five thousand. John Goad knows that oftentimes when a deal sounds too good to be true, it usually is. He was selling uh, investments and it, uh, it was kind of complicated and that it sounded real good on the surface and we were just about to go along with him but we got to studying it in looking into it real closely. Treasurer Purdue joined other constitutional officers for a Q&A session about the services each of their state offices offer to help with fraud prevention. We want to be part of your partnership to help you save money and keep your money, and that's what we do in the Treasurer's office. While the Operation Scam Jam focuses on how to keep from losing the money you already have, Treasurer Purdue's Women and Money Conference provides practical tips for saving and growing your net worth. You want to spend less than you earn or earn more than you spend. The notion of saving versus spending is often easier said than done. I know we could all save more. It's hard to prioritize the future whenever you have these immediate needs or probably more likely ones. There is a reason why Treasure Purdue started this financial conference geared towards women. You know, 75% of the financial uh, income of a family is controlled by a woman. To have a conference really just applicable for us as females who do live longer, I being an example, it's critical because you can't know what you don't know. Dee's workshop touches on a range of financial topics, from the basics of saving to the more complex issues of investing. You're all going to have to learn about investing. Saving is good, investing is better. Another hot topic was Dee's tips on getting out of credit card debt. Contact each of the credit card companies, ask them to lower your rate. I'd like you to consolidate the debt. I'd like you to choose a card to pay off first. For Joan Skaggs and Miranda Vance, Dee's advice about estate planning really hit home. I lost my husband two years ago, and we had done all of the things that Dee talked about, but it was a nice refresher course for me to make sure I could say, check, check, check. I've had some family situations lately that have made me think more about I need to have a plan. Dee Lee is a familiar face at the Treasurer's Women and Money conferences, but her financial advice is always fresh. When you go to a conference, you hear only what you need to hear and you may be in an entirely different situation in three, four years, and so you come again, or you send someone else, and you'll hear something different if you come again. So every time I find something new information, even if I've heard it before, it didn't sink in until this time because my situation is different. Through Women and Money Conferences, Money Smart Week, and other initiatives, Treasure Purdue is dedicated to financial education for all ages. So we're here to help you become better educated, not fall into pitfalls and make mistakes, to help make the right decisions as you go and continue to go through life. Reporting for Treasury Notes, I'm Kim Ward. All right, thanks, Kim. A lot of great events with Money Smart Week. We've been participating in that event for several years in Treasure. In the video we just saw, there are two events associated with Money Smart Week, particularly that our office is involved in. Let's talk about the first event that uh, you were one of the guest speakers of Operation Scam Jam. Why do you think it's so important that we make sure that our older generations know about scams and, and are aware of these problems out there? 
Well, Gina, AR, AARP is a great organization. They really focus on scams. And we realize uh, what we do in Women of Money and other things that scams are so important. I'm a perfect good example of that. I have a 90-year-old mother. And, uh, you know, I have to teach her, like she taught me, no thanks. And that's what I'm trying to get her to say when people call her on the phone all the time, wanting to sell her this or do this or do that. Just say, no thanks, and just hang up the phone. We've got to learn to say no and teach and educate our seniors that the answer is no. And so uh, we work with AARP and, uh, and very closely in, the, in those scams. And uh, Scam Jam is so important to get that message out. Every year we try to do something with them to get that message out. And Money Smart Week is a perfect opportunity for us to focus on some of our program as well as focus on our seniors of the state and making sure they're educated on what is coming down the trail on the different scams that are out there, whether computer scams or whether a paving scam or whether it's a phone scam or whatever it might be. And it's all about financial education. And, and Josh, you really have a background in education. That's one of your main backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about, as you come into the treasurer's office, why financial education will be a focus for you and why it's so important. Well, financial education is important I mean, for, for a number of reasons. First off, if a kid, regardless of whether it's uh, j just to have a, an awareness of, of, of their own college savings, which, which can lead into Smart 529 discussion as well, but, but just having a basic idea of, of dollars and cents because at the end of the day, if they're not taught that at home, then they need to be taught it at school. And, and, and unfortunately, a lot of parents aren't, aren't, aren't aware themselves or not financially literate enough of themselves to teach their children the, the, the value of money and what they need to do and how to save and how much something costs. And to be able to do that on a great appropriate level, whether that's elementary school, middle school, or high school, is important. And, 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 to, take it and, and, and to take it to the level that they know and can understand and then, and, and then practice that every day uh, it is something that, that will follow them the rest of their lives regardless of what they do. And it will make for a, a, just a more productive citizen and a more, and a, and a more pr productive uh, a, a more productive state because those people won't, uh, as they grow into adults, won't necessarily have, have, uh, have the issues that, that just come with, with, with just sheer ignorance of, 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 of financial literacy. So You talked about something really important that children can't know about financial literacy if their parents don't know how to right. be fiscally responsible. And Treasurer Purdue, that's something you have worked hard to do, not just teaching children through the Net Worth program, but also teaching adults. You started a program more than 10 years ago, now Women in Money, which teaches women primarily, but we also have a lot of mm -hmm. men who attend this event. And it, we go out there, do this conference that is a great event to help teach them how to better manage their money. Talk about why you think this event is so successful. Well, as we get in our later years, uh, you know, women end up doing most of the finances in the later years. They outlive us men, and then all of a sudden, things are dumped into their lap, whether it's uh, the, uh, the 401k that they, they're managing, whether it's their checking account, whether it's a savings account or CDs, whether it's stock that they invested in. And this is a perfect good time for scams to happen mm -hmm. and for people to take advantage of these people. They've lost their closest partner in life, their loved one, their husband, or their wife. And then all of a sudden now someone is taking advantage of the finances. And believe it or not, people follow those obituaries in the paper and see who has passed away. And pretty soon they're getting that phone call. And so it's important for us to educate and, and teach them the importance of estate planning, the point importance of planning ahead and not taking those phone calls and making sure they can take care of their finances. And that's why we do the Women and Money conferences. We've helped thousands of West Virginians around the state help manage their money, help plan ahead uh, about their future, and, and that's why it's so important for us to do that. And we are going to have more Women and Money conferences around the state. The next one is going to be held in Parkersburg in November. So go to our website, wvtreasury.com, for more information on that. We hope soon to have more information on that conference and many others coming up. Earlier, I mentioned about the Unclaimed Property Division. Treasurer Purdue's office is currently holding more than $180 million in unclaimed property. Recently, he had the opportunity to return nearly a quarter of a million dollars to its rightful owners in just one day. It was a great day for us. 
On this trip to the Potomac Highlands, we saw once again how unclaimed property often makes its way back to its original owner at just the right moment. Greg Stone has more. It's an area of the state noted for its majestic scenery, but on this day, the treasures were of a monetary nature. State Treasurer John Perdue traveled to Eastern West Virginia Community and Technical College to present more than $240,000 in unclaimed property to people in the Potomac Highlands region. A lot of people didn't know what unclaimed property was when I became state treasurer. I remember we used to travel the state of West Virginia and go to the fairs and festivals and county fairs and uh, we would try to get people to come up and look for unclaimed property and uh, they would uh, think we was from the tax department or someone trying to collect their money. Supported by Delegate Isaac Sponogle and Eastern President Dr. Chuck Terrell, Treasurer Purdue continued a proud tradition of returning unclaimed property in the Mountain State. And we returned over $120 million in the state of West Virginia since I became state treasurer and started finding people their money, their money, not the state's money. And I think that says a lot for what my people has done. Delegate Sponogle of Pendleton County praised Treasurer Purdue. Let me just say one thing too, with the unclaimed property, prior to that being in effect, uh, the banks, the lending institutions, the insurance companies, they just kept this money uh, primarily until this law went into effect. And John's one of the biggest advocates for consumers in the state of West Virginia. Like, that's your money. And instead of the, these financial institutions just taking it and putting it in their pocket, John fights every day and tries to put, make people aware of it and give your money back to them. So I, I truly, he's done an outstanding job as state treasurer. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. <laughs> Treasurer Purdue presented Mary Alice Barb of Hardy County a check for $2,261. She credited Treasurer's Office field representative Vic Shockey for finding shares of stock she had failed to cash. I said, are you sure? And he says, yes, I'm sure. So he come down to the house and I said, well, I, did, I mean, it really amazed me that they would actually go to the extent of finding somebody to give them money. Barb has plans for the money. I have a child in college. This is his third year. And he has to do internship this summer. And we had to get him an apartment. And I didn't know how on earth I was going to pay for that for this summer. And that's what I'm going to do with it. Greg Stone reporting for Treasury Notes. All right, thanks so much, Greg. Great story there. And Treasurer Purdue, you see this happen all the time. You present someone an unclaimed property check and they say it came, it couldn't have come at a better time. That happens to you, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. I travel the state and I have so many people come up to me and say, you know, your office finding me that unclaimed property, that money for it. I need a new roof on my house. I need to get braces for my kid. I was wondering where I was going to get the money. And she just saw there that lady was going to help with education, which is really makes me proud that she's putting that money in education to help her, her grandson or granddaughter to go to college. And that, that's very important. Unclaimed property, though, uh, people have no idea. You said $180 million that we still have, and it still continues to grow. It can be a life insurance policy. It can be stocks and bonds. It can be an old bank account. Uh, it can be so many things, and it falls through the cracks, and we are able to return that money. So that really makes us feel good. We have a lot of people working hard around the state to find those individuals. Returning $120 million is nothing to sneeze at, getting that back to rightful owners. And, you know, that makes you feel good that you're helping West Virginians especially some of them at a critical time in their life when they're really looking at some way to come up with the money to make something happen. Yeah, absolutely. We love unclaimed property. It's great to give money back. Always happy to do it. And if you think you may have unclaimed property, well, just go to our website. You see it there on your screen, wvtreasury.com. All you have to do is type in your name and you might find out that you have unclaimed property. Switching gears a little bit here, we're going to go from unclaimed property to talking more about our Smart 529 accounts. In May, 15 elementary school students were honored for their winning entries from the sixth annual When I Grow Up essay contest. The contest is also a great tool for teachers who have the chance to enter the essay contest by writing about how they plan to use the When I Grow Up contest in their lesson plans. Shannon Panaris, a third grade teacher from Paw Elementary School in Morgan County, had the winning essay this year. 
Treasurer Purdue had the opportunity to visit Shanna's classroom to see part of the lesson plan she wrote about it being put into action. When Shanna Paneris started creating a lesson plan for the When I Grow Up essay contest, she knew she would need a way to keep her students engaged in the activity. And in my essay, I wrote to keep my students engaged, we were going to do a time capsule, something fun for them to do, something for them to remember in the year 2022 and 2023 when they graduate. Suddenly, this tiny time capsule blossomed into a big deal. What can I bring from home? How big is it going to be? How, hold, how big do we have to dig the hole? Lots and lots of questions about the time capsule. Shanna's essay about preserving students' future career plans in a time capsule earned the top prize in Treasurer Purdue's When I Grow Up teacher essay contest this spring. And the treasurer was excited to be at Pawpaw Elementary School to help these students bury their time capsule. Are you excited about that? Yeah! yeah. But before stuffing their essays and keepsakes into the capsule, they shared them with the crowd. I will be following my dreams, and one day I hope to be the best artist ever. I brought to put in the time capsule silly bracelet. I am going to be a very nice doctor. When I grow up, I want to be a professional chef. I want to serve people in my own restaurant. I brought in a picture I made of a butterfly because I love drawing butterflies. When I grow up, I want to be a zookeeper. Shanna and her students are excited about the prospect of reading their essays and seeing their keepsakes again when they're seniors. When you graduate, you get to know if you really want to be that anymore. Um, they brought some little trinkets in. They brought some best friend pictures. It'll be interesting to see, you know, are they still best friends? Do they still enjoy the coins? Do they still, you know, do they remember the little squinkies that they played with? While it is fun to think about opening the time capsule down the road, first they have to bury it. Took up all the and it is officially closed. <laughs> and for many of these students, the moment the time capsule went into the ground was the highlight of their day. I got to have fun and play in the dirt while I bury it. Reporting for Treasury Notes, I'm Kim Ward. So many great essays, and they will open that time capsule back up when they are seniors in high school. Treasurer, tell us what that day was like for you. Oh, that was an exciting day to listen to those children read their essays that they had written about, and whatever they want to be, a veterinarian, a teacher, a police officer. But they were so excited about burying a time capsule capsule, being able to put something in that, uh, that was an exciting time. And the, the teacher had done such a marvelous job. She won the essay contest, but that's our future. All those kids are West Virginia's future. There are future teachers, there are future lawyers, doctors, uh, business people, uh, police officers, as I said, farming, all kinds of professions. They are our future, and being able to get them thinking about that and get their parents to save for their children's education and grandchildren's education. That's what the Smart 529 program is all about. And you know, that's what our, our state's all about, is making our next generation better than the past generation. And that's what I'm trying to do with the Smart 529 plan, educate our children and grandchildren for the future of this state. And, and that means a lot to me. And you can tell from the video that you really enjoy going out into the community and getting involved. And because of your community efforts, you were recently honored at the opening ceremony of the West Virginia Coal Festival in Boone County. Kim Ward has more on that as well. At this time, I'd like to introduce the gentleman that suggested that we start the West Virginia Coal Festival. 20 years ago, before he was your state treasurer, John Perdue was working at the state capitol when it came to his attention there would be no West Virginia Coal Festival. So he decided to take action. With John's uh, backing, we got to charter for the West Virginia Coal Festival. For John Perdue, Boone County was the perfect place to host the Coal Festival. And no better place to start the Coal Festival than where coal was discovered in Boone County. A place that Purdue also happens to call home. I'm proud to say I'm from Boone County. And I'm proud to say coal is Boone County. The West Virginia Coal Festival is a fun family event filled with music, parades, pageants, and other festivities. But most of all, it is a celebration of the coal industry and the people who keep that industry going. We promote coal, and this keeps Boone County going. During the opening ceremonies for the 2013 Coal Festival, Purdue was honored for the part he played in bringing this festival to life. We're going to present him with a statue of the Daniel Boone, a mountaineer. 
Purdue then assisted in the lighting of the torch to officially kick off the 20th West Virginia Coal Festival, an annual event he helped create. He's a great support for the West Virginia Coal Festival. We thank John Purdue. And continued through the hard work and dedication of many. I just want to thank each and every one of you for what you do, each and every individual, for the Coal Festival, because this festival is continuing to grow, and it will continue to grow on and on and on. Reporting for Treasury Notes, I'm Kim Ward. Involved in a lot of community events, both, both as the state treasurer and uh, just personally, you worked on the Coal Festival many years ago. Tell us how you got involved in that. Well, you know, that's my home county, Boone County, and, uh, you know, I have so many relatives that were in the coal industry uh, as miners, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, when you go back home, and it uh, came to my attention when I was working in the governor's office at the time for Governor Caperton uh, that uh, we didn't have a coal festival, and I thought the best place to have a coal festival would be where coal was discovered. And so uh, I went over to uh, Boone County, a lot of business leaders there, a lot of uh, community leaders said that's a great idea. We started putting it together. 20 years later, it's growing to be one of the best festivals in the state. And so I'm very proud of, of my where I come from, and, and coal is such a big important part of West Virginia's uh, future and has been for many, many years and will continue to be. And so the Coal Festival is just to remind people how important coal is to the future of West Virginia and the budget of West Virginia. And Josh, just to recap a little bit, we, we've talked a lot on this show about how the Treasurer's Office goes out into the community and how we're, we try to really be a presence out there. Why is that so important to our office? I think it's important to, to, to not just the office. I mean, it, it functions as something that I think that, that most citizens don't realize the Treasurer's Office does. So it's awareness. Uh, and, and again, with the things that... <clears throat> that I've personally been involved in with the financial literacy program, implementing uh, those programs in school, actually had the program in the middle school, in Horseman Middle School that I just left, but also the just the sheer awareness of programs like the Smart 529. You know, a lot of people understand, yeah, they need to have money for college, they don't know how they're going to get it, but they don't understand how a program that runs out of the treasurer's office can actually help them attain that goal and make the goal of a college education more affordable and more attainable for their kids. And so just, just pushing those programs out there in the public, making sure that, that as many eyes that can see it as possible see it, uh, is, is, is vital to the, to the state of West Virginia because, it, again, it promotes, again, a, a, a function that, that, that kids need and parents need um, and makes the state better as a whole. And definitely something we are we are always working to do is Absolutely. make the state a better place to live in. Josh Stowers, our new deputy treasurer, thank you so much for joining us Thanks here today. We me. really appreciate you being here with us. And Treasurer Purdue, as always, great to have you on the show. We appreciate you joining us here today. Well, that's all the time we have for the show. Thanks for joining us. And remember, you can get the latest news and information from the state treasurer's office on the go. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or check out our blog for financial information. Connect with the treasurer's office today. Visit us at wvtreasury.com. Keeping you informed on the Library Television Network, I'm Gina Joins with the office of West Virginia State Treasurer John Purdue.